Hello everyone. This is Adish. I'm a grade 10 student from Mumbai. So today's problem is chef and BQ. The difficulty level of this problem is easy medium. And the only prerequisite you need to know to be able to solve this problem is sub mask enumeration. So you should try to read this CP algorithms article on sub mask enumeration. And if you can understand it, then you will be able to understand my solution for this problem. So in this problem, we are basically given a modified DQ with n elements and the DQ supports the following two operations. The first operation is in which we delete k elements from the beginning and end. And the second operation is in which we delete k elements only from the end. And note that we can perform only one of these two operations at a time. And the integer k which we choose must be a power of 2. And we can choose each value of k at most once. So these are the three conditions. And these are the two possible operations. And chef is also given a special integer m. And he needs to find out the minimum number of operations to perform such that there's at least one element remaining and the sum of the remaining elements in the DQ is divisible by M. So if it is impossible to achieve this goal, we print minus one. Otherwise, you print the minimum number of operations needed. We are given T test cases and each test case we need to read in the values of N and M. And we basically need to output the minimum number of operations or minus one. Now it's important to take a look at the limits and the subtasks. So in the limit, we are basically guaranteed that the sum of n does not exceed 3 into 10 to the power of 5. And this is important, as I'll mention a little bit ahead in the video. So now let's look at the sample test cases to get a better understanding of the problem. In the first example, we are given n is 4 and the modulus is 7. And we are given these four elements in the DQ. And it's optimal to remove the elements 4 and 6. And notice that although we remove two elements, we can choose the value of k to be equal to 1. And hence, in one single operation, we can basically get the required result that the sum of the remaining elements, which is 8 plus 6, which is 14, is divisible by 7. Similarly, in the third example, the sum of all the elements is already divisible by 1. So that's why we don't have to put any operations. And in the fourth sample test case, there is actually no way in which we can remove elements satisfying the three conditions. So now I'll move on to the key observation required to solve this problem. And from that observation, the rest of the solution follows quite logically. So the key observation is that let's say we have deleting a prefix of length pref and a suffix of length suff. Note that since we are always deleting elements from either the beginning or the end, the in the final case, what we are essentially doing is we are essentially deleting a prefix, we are deleting a suffix, and the remaining elements will form a contiguous subarray in the middle. So that's why let's say that in the end, after we have done all the operations, we have deleted a prefix of length pref and a suffix of length suff. Then the key idea is that let's say that pref is composed of some number of powers of 2 or basically some sum of powers of 2. So let's say pref is 2 to the i1 plus 2 to the i2 plus 2 to the i3 plus all the way up till 2 to the or let's just say it's just these three elements. So basically we just did these three operations and let's say that suff is composed of some other elements, then it's important to realize that since in each operation we are deleting either a suffix, so basically we are deleting either from the end or from the beginning and the end, that's why the suff or basically the suffix which we have deleted must include all these three operations. So the suffix must be the sum of these three uh, indices or basically these three k values and then it can basically have some potential other values. So let's say we apply two more operations. 
of deleting 2 to the i4 plus 2 to the i5 elements from the suffix. So basically we have deleted this length prefix and we and since we always delete a prefix along with a suffix this is the length of the suffix by default and there are some more elements which we delete from the suffix. So now it's important to realize that just by writing it out in this way the suffix includes the prefix or basically the prefix is a subset of the suffix. So this is actually the whole key idea or the key observation required to solve this problem. So basically we came to the conclusion that the prefix of elements which we deleted from the DQ is actually a sub mask or a subset of the suffix of elements which we deleted from the DQ. And if you still didn't get why this is true, just try to take out a few examples or just notice that this number is actually a subset or a sub mask of this number. And that's basically why prefix should be a subset of the suffix. Now equipped with this key observation, let's try to build the full solution. So let's basically iterate over all possible lengths of the suffix which we delete. And since we have the knowledge that the prefix should be a subset of the suffix, we can just directly use the submask enumeration technique to find out all possible subsets of the suffix or basically all possible submasks of the suffix which will give us the prefix. So we'll basically iterate over all possible suffixes and go over the subsets of the suffix to find all possible lengths of the prefix. And notice that uh, from our definition of pref and suff, we know that pref is the length of the prefix which we delete and suff is the length of the suffix which we delete. So this basically means that if we have an array of n elements, then we are deleting elements from 1 to pref. So basically we are deleting 1, 2, 3 all the way up to pref. And from the end, we are basically deleting n, n minus 1 all the way up till n minus suff. So these are the two sides of the dq which we are deleting and the remaining elements form this contiguous array basically going from indices pref plus 1 to n minus suff minus 1. So this should actually be n minus suff plus 1 up till n because um, if you just basically calculate the length of this you will get to know that it's suffix. So sorry for the small mistake. So basically the subarray which remains goes from pref plus 1 to n minus suff. So basically the sum of that subarray is the sum of the elements from pref plus 1 to n minus suff. And since we want to find the sum of elements in a contiguous range, let's use the prefix sums uh, method to basically find out the subarray sum efficiently. So let's say we are using sums of i to represent the prefix sum up till i. So basically sum of i represents the summation for i going from 1 or basically for j going from 1 to i and um, a of i or basically dq of i. And based on this uh, notation of sums of i which can be found in O of n, we know that the sum of the subarray is just sums of n minus suff because that's the ending point. So one index before that is the ending point. And we'll basically subtract sums of pref because like pref is the first value which is out of this range. So that's why we need to subtract sums of pref. And this will actually give us the sum of remaining elements. So sum of remaining elements is just sums of n minus suff minus sums of pref and the condition which needs to be met is that this sum of remaining element should be equal to 0 mod m. So that's exactly what we will check um, after we basically fix the value of pref and suff. And now once we have met these three conditions, we actually need to update the answer. So since we are trying to minimize the operation, we'll basically do our answer is min of answer comma the cost for this. Now it's important 
to realize that the cost or basically the number of operations we perform when we are deleting a prefix of length pref and a suffix of length suff is just the number of set bits in suff. So the number of set bits in suff will be the number of operations which we do. And that's because if you take this example in which we delete 2 to the i1 elements and then 2 to the i2 and 2 to the i3 elements and we basically then delete 2 to the i4 and 2 to the i5 elements then you'll realize that what we are essentially doing is 5 operations and 5 is actually the number of set bits in suff. So that gives the intuition why the number of set bits in suff is just equal to the number of operations which we do. So basically in conclusion we'll use the submask enumeration technique to iterate over all subsets of the fix suffix and that will basically be our prefix and then we'll basically ensure the condition that the sum of the remaining elements which is given by this expression is congruent to 0 mod m or basically is divisible by m and then we'll update the answer to be the minimum of answer comma number of set bits in suff and the number of set bits in suff can be easily found in O of uh, log n time by doing built in pop count of suff. So that's all that's in the solution. Now I'll explain my code and the time complexity for this solution. So in my code, I take in the value of t, which is the number of test cases. For each test case, I take in the value of n and m, which is the number of elements in the dq. And ironically, as you saw from the solution, it has nothing to do with a dq. Then I take in the value of m, which is the modulus. And I take in the, I take in, I basically create a prefix summary called sums. So basically, I just store the prefix summary. I don't have anything to do with uh, the actual dq. Then I initialize the answer to be 10 to the power of 9 because actually, if you noticed, the answer is the built in pop count of something. So basically, it's the number of set bits in something and that will not be greater than 32 or 33 uh, because the maximum value of n itself is about 3 into 10 to the power of 5. Then I have a small condition. If the prefix sum of the whole array is 0, I just print out 0 and I continue. This is just some border case which you can take care of. And I basically do the sum mask enumeration idea. So for each size of the suffix going from 1 to n, I basically delete the suffix of size suff from the end. And as I mentioned, prefix will be a sub mask of the suffix. That's why I go over the subsets of suffix in an efficient way using the sub mask enumeration idea. And I basically have some conditions. One important condition which I didn't explicitly mention um, in the explanation was that if the prefix plus the suffix is greater than or equal to n, Basically, when there are no elements left, um, we basically just uh, ignore this case. So when there are no elements left, ignore because um, because there has to be at least one element left as per the problem statement. And then I basically have the sum of the elements left, which I uh, mentioned to be sums of n minus suff minus sums of pref. And if, if that is divisible by m, then I basically minimize, I basically take answer to be the minimum of answer and the number of set bits in suff. And um, that's all that's there in the solution. Uh, make sure that you consider the case when pref is zero, like that's just a border case which you can take care of. And uh, that's the whole idea. If the answer is infinity, we just print minus one, otherwise we print the answer. And this code actually gets accepted in about 0.53 seconds. So now I'll explain um, why this code uh, works so fast and what's the exact time complexity. So the reason why this code works so fast is because although the amount of operations the submask enumeration technique takes is 3 to the x where x is the maximum mask or basically in this case we know that x is basic 2 to the x is basically n so that's why um, x is log 2 of n. So basically the time complexity is actually supposed to be O of 3 to the log 2n 
However, this is a very weak estimate and actually 3 to the log 2 n for n is 3 into 10 to the power of 5 is around 10 to the power of 8 operations, which does not seem to have passed in 0.53 seconds. But actually the reason why it is so fast is because some amount of subsets do not actually get visited. And basically this is a weak bound. And mainly because n need not be a power of 2. So this will actually get rounded down to something uh, smaller. And if n was actually a power of 2, then this would be the exact time complexity. Otherwise, this is just a way to higher bound. And that's basically why, uh, that's basically an informal way of explaining why this code works so fast. So that's basically the whole solution. If you had any doubt in any part of the solution, do leave your comments down below and I'll try to answer them to the best of my abilities. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and thank you for watching this video.